Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Ken's Five. My name is David Lynch. I am sitting here today, this weekend, with Emmy Award nominated and Indie Spirit Award winning actor, Lou Diamond Phillips. Lou, yeah, thanks for joining us. We forgot the Tony Award and the Golden Globe, but you know, Can't forget that, those. not that that means anything <laughs> at all. Just thought we tossed it in there. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, you're obviously here in South by San Antonio this weekend to host a screening of La Bamba, your breakout hit. Uh, yes, indeed, and it's actually, uh, uh, Predicated by a couple of uh, wonderful things, uh, a very dear friend of mine, Tony Ritter, and his wife Patty have a nonprofit uh, called the Starbright, Starbright Foundation. Uh, I've known Tony, and it's scary. We just figured it out. I mean, we were 12 years old, you know, uh, when I met him in seventh grade uh, down in Flower Bluff, you know, just outside of Corpus Christi, and uh, junior high, high school football team together, uh, college roommates, the whole nine yards, yes. and I'm and I'm really really proud. Uh, of what Tony has done with his psychology degree uh, and informing this nonprofit, you know, and helping a lot of families, uh, you know, who have uh, uh, challenged, uh, you know, children, um, some young adults, you know, uh, uh, disabled uh, mentally uh, throughout, you know, South Texas. So uh, a lot of the uh, the profits are going toward that foundation to help out these families uh, for emergency funds for a summer camp, you know, for some of the kids. Um, and uh, when he asked me, you know, because he had just formed the, the Starbuck Foundation recently, uh, when he asked me to do that, it was a kind of a no-brainer. And it just became obvious to, uh, to do La Bamba because uh, this is the 60th anniversary of the day the music died, mm -hmm. February 3rd, 59, when the, uh, the plane went down with Richie and, and Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we kind of, we you know, found a reason to, to put the two together and, uh, uh, you know, get back to South Texas. So there's several dates, uh, I imagine, across Texas for this tour. Where are you heading to next after this? I'm, so, there, I'm sorry, there uh, was. Are, are, is this screening part of a kind of a tour with these? No, guys? man, okay. this is it. This is oh, a one-off. This, one. this, this is for my friend. I, yes. I, I'm actually working in New York, uh, and I was working, uh, you know, until the wee hours on Friday night. So, uh, and I have to work tomorrow night. Uh, no, I'm, I literally came in just for this. This is not part of a tour. This is not part of a, okay. you know, a, a bigger campaign. This is uh, literally to come in just for the Tobin Center, nice. just for my friend's foundation, uh, and, you know, and San Antonio. So, uh, you know, happy to do it. Well, I know the city appreciates it. When's the last time you were in San Antonio? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I was actually here for the, uh, the tricentennial. Okay. Uh, I was working, uh, I was directing a Fear the Walking Dead uh, last, uh, it would have been April, I mm -hmm. think, April or May, uh, uh, up in Austin. And uh, I was invited, to, you know, down by, by uh, Mayor Nuremberg and uh, his wife Erica Prosper mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, to come to an event. Uh, and it was the big, you know, gala uh, event uh, celebrating the, the tricentennial. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, my good buddy Nicholas Gonzalez from uh, The Good Doctor was here as well. So uh, uh, that, I believe, was the last time. So it was just a, just a, a little over a year ago. Nice, nice. Yeah. So obviously, as most people may know, you, you were raised in Texas. Mm -hmm. You were born in the Philippines. Yeah. Um, it, correct me if I'm wrong, were you raised more in Lubbock or Corpus Christi? No, no, I was raised in uh, uh, Corpus Christi. Buddy Holly okay. was raised in Lubbock. Yeah, yeah no, I uh, uh, was born in the Philippines. Dad was Navy, traveled around to a lot of Navy bases, but eventually settled down uh, uh, at uh, NAS Corpus Christi, you know, right in, outside of Flower Bluff there. Uh, and spent uh, most of my formative years from junior high on, uh, actually, and then went to uh, the University of Texas at Arlington, mm -hmm. you know, up outside of Dallas there in Arlington. Uh, so, you know, my, uh, my Texas roots run uh, really deep. My dad is still down there. You know, obviously my friend Tony and his wife Patty, uh, a number of my college friends are still living, you know, in Austin uh, and in San Antonio and, and in those areas. Uh, one of my dear friends is uh, still teaching. Mm -hmm. actually uh, down, in, down in Corpus Christi at our old alma mater in Flower Bluff. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, my connections are, uh, uh, as I said, very strong here. And um, a lot of times when I sneak into town to see friends or whatever, I try to do it under the radar. Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. How much, did you listen to, to Rich's music growing up? Did that have a place before yeah, my dad, my, my dad really uh, had, had in extremely diverse musical tastes, you know, so he had everything from, you know, Johnny Cash and 50s rock and roll to, you know, Simon and Garfunkel. Uh -huh. So I was certainly familiar with, you know, Richie's music, but I, I can't by any means say that I was uh, an expert on it, you know, uh, or even knew, you know, the full backstory. I had no idea that he was only 17, you know, when, when he died in the plane crash. Yeah. So landing the role in La Bamba was a, a massive education for me, and, and, uh, one that was uh, really a trial by fire. I mean, I was cast on the Friday before rehearsals started in Los Angeles. Really? We had one week of rehearsals, 
you know, I hung out with the family a lot. Yeah. Uh, uh, Luis Valdez had wanted me to actually put on a little weight because at the time, at 24 years old, I was, you know, I was as skinny as you, <laughs> you know. So uh, um, it, it was it was a huge regimen, man. I mean, it was a, an absolute gauntlet. Not to mention, uh, I did not play guitar then. I don't play guitar still. I had to learn all of the fingering by rote. Uh, 16 songs. They had already re, uh, recorded uh, Los Lobos and David Hidalgo performing all of them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was half my day, you know, right there, uh, in addition to the rehearsals and, and just all the mountains of research, you know, the, uh, you know about Richie and, uh, you know, all of the, the stuff surrounding the event. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, I got to become an expert really quick. It's kind of interesting that you touch on that part of, of learning kind of not just about his life, but also kind of the mannerisms of when you're on stage. Because mm -hmm. for me personally, when I watch uh, La Bamba um, and, and on repeat viewings, one of the things that continually stands out to me is the energy that you have mm -hmm. channeling him on stage. Um, from, if you remember, where, where did that energy come from? I mean, it looks, it's almost like you were a musician, musician yourself growing up and you were channeling uh, from thank that. Thank you. Yeah, no, no, man. I was pretending to be a rock star. <laughs> you know, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still pretending. Um, Really, just a lot of conversations with his family, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a lot of stills. Strangely enough, the, uh, the only video of Richie was uh, one appearance in a movie called Go, Johnny, Go. Mm -hmm. uh, and he did not sing La Bamba. He sang uh, Come On, Let's Go. Uh, and uh, just, just seeing a little bit of his body language, getting a sense, you know, of, of who he was. Uh, you know, long conversations, not only with his uh, brother Bob, mm -hmm. you know, played by Issa Morales in the movie, mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, his sister Connie, who was 12 at the time, and her remembrances, some of his aunts, uh, his mom who was there, you know, Connie Sr., for, for every day of the filming. Um, so it was, it was really trying to get a, a, a sense of who he was. Mm -hmm. And I remember, actually, one of the, uh, uh, the real milestones for me uh, was probably about a week, week and a half uh, into shooting uh, when he does the uh, uh, audition for the silhouettes in the garage, right. you know, uh, and uh, uh, sings uh, uh, gonna, gonna Rock It Up, you know. Uh, one of his aunts was on set that day and she saw the first take and, and thank goodness she turned to uh, Luis Valdez, and our director and Taylor Hackford, our producer, and she went, that's Richie. I was wow. like, whew, thank goodness, I'm wow. not going to get fired today. That's awesome. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because I knew, I had an idea that they were associated with the production. I was, gonna, I was kind of yeah. wondering if how closely you kind of talked to them, but it looks like that really fleshed out how you would portray him. Yeah, they were there every day, and they're, they're, uh, the family, the Valenzuela family, is there throughout the film. I mean, you know, uh, uh, from the, uh, the apricot picking sequences in the beginning through to, you know, some of the later party scenes, you can see his sisters and his mom even, you know, all uh, uh, sort of salted throughout the, the, uh, the film uh, as, as a little bit of a, you know, homage. Uh, and I remember the very first day of filming, the very first day of filming, we were up in Watsonville uh, because they had timed it to the apricot harvest. Um, my pickup time was, I think, 6 a.m. in the morning to go to set. Uh, and we were all in hotels. And uh, at 5.30, a half an hour before my actual pickup, you know, there's this pounding on the door and it's Richie's mom. Connie. She's going, Richie, wake up. It's time to go to work. And I went, okay, here we are. <laughs> this is, you know, yeah. this is total method immersion. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. So um, I hadn't realized until I'd done my research that it's been 60 years this year yeah. since, since the plane crash. Yeah. What do you think, 60 years on, um, with, this, with this screening and maybe with anyone else continuing to find his story through La Bamba, yeah. the story of Richie Valens, what do you think the film continues to do for his legacy um, this long on? Well, I mean, it's been pretty wonderful. Um, I remember there was a Richie Valens Day, uh, and Mayor Tom Bradley was the mayor of uh, Los Angeles at the time. And um, Connie was there. At this point, uh, it, it was revealed that she'd had a, a, she'd had terminal cancer. Uh, and she held on. She held on to be able to see everything that happened, mm -hmm. you know. And I remember I was on stage, and I was standing next to her, and she was in her wheelchair. And she had my hand, and she pulled me down. And, and because he was being honored that day, I mean, Connie said, you gave me my son back, you know, which I think kind of sums it all up. Uh, very recently, they named a, uh, uh, a freeway out in Los Angeles, out in the Pacoima Valley, uh, you know, after Richie. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that his legacy you know, has continued. And not to ennoble it too much, but I think the film certainly you know, focused on Richie and his contributions, uh, uh, as opposed to him just being a, a footnote or an asterisk in Buddy Holly's career. 
you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it really um, allowed people to know who he was and uh, what an impact he had. I mean, you know, he, he was, if not the first, you know, one of the first Latino rockers, you know, uh, and especially somebody who, who um, sang, you know, in Spanish, mm -hmm. who, who injected uh, a cultural influence into rock and roll. And I, and I think um, he would have done amazing things, you know, uh, yeah. uh, you know uh, going forward. I mean, even the fact that, you know, Carlos Santana, you know, did our soundtrack. He wrote the score to the soundtrack. He is certainly, I, I think, you know, a carrier of the torch uh, of what Richie had started. Mm -hmm. and, and so um, now more than ever, uh, we're seeing a real eye toward diversity toward inclusion, toward authenticity. And uh, not only Richie, but this film, you know, is a testament to that. And it's, you know, it's been 32 years, right. you know, since La Bamba came out. Uh, and we're still having this conversation. So fortunately, um, not only is the movie still relevant in a, in a very, very social, you know, uh, uh, cultural way, um, but it's, you know, it's still inspirational to each generation that discovers it. You know, it's, it, we have screenings like this, or people find it on, you know, their parents show it to them, or they see it on HBO or something at, you know, mm -hmm. two in the afternoon. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, it, it's evergreen. Uh, it, it's not trendy. It hasn't, it's, it's really held up well, you know, I have to say. And so uh, um, it, it's, always, it's always an honor to come and, you know, sort of support it. Right. Lou, hey, thank you very much thank for stopping by. Appreciate it, man. City of San Antonio, I'm sure, is happier here. Yeah, thrilled to be here. Absolutely. Thank you very much for talking. Excellent, man.